Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday the 15th of December and we are on day 18 of Finding Hope Under Bethlehem Skies. Uh, So far as we've been reading through the story we have uh, watched God's love for us and we have uh, seen it very clearly in the love that Ruth has for Naomi. But today we've got a picture of Jesus Christ in Boaz himself. Ruth goes to Boaz, as we've already noted, and basically says to him, will you redeem me? And what would his response be is our fear. And the situation for us is we come to Jesus Christ and we say to Jesus, will you redeem me? Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for the way that I've lived my life. Will you redeem me? Will you take away my sin? And what would Christ's reaction to us be? Boaz could have reacted to Ruth and said, well, no, are you crazy? Of course I'm not going to redeem you. You're a foreigner. You're from Moab, Moab of all places. I'm not going to go near you. You're... um, so he, you're an absolute fool for even thinking this. And we could have the same fear as we go to Jesus. Jesus, will you redeem me? And we could expect Jesus to turn and say, well, well no, you, you've sinned far too much in your life. Why would I redeem you? Or you aren't clever enough. I, I need people who have a bit more intellect than you have. Or you've got no social standing. What would be the point in me redeeming you? You're, you're just a nobody. But Boaz doesn't say any of those things and he says, I will redeem, I will do it. And Jesus says the same to us. Whenever we come to him, Jesus says, I will redeem you, I will do it. In fact, Jesus quite legitimately says, I have done it. It's already done. I have redeemed you. I have been to the cross. I have taken your sin upon myself. I have suffered and died for you. And I have risen again with victory. And therefore, we have Jesus saying to us in answer to our situation today, yes, I have done it. Yes, it is done. The process has been sorted out and I am redeeming and nobody else will do it. Nobody else can take it away. I am the one who redeems. And so we've got this wonderful, wonderful situation and we praise God for it today. So today we're going to read verses 12 to 18 and we're going to find um, Boaz's, uh, a little bit more of Boaz's response. So let's read together. Now, we do have a little fly in the ointment today because everything has been going so well. Boaz has said that he's going to redeem. But now he points out that there might be somebody else who has a stake on the the redeemer position. And therefore, he could redeem the land and therefore he could also take Ruth as his wife. Although it is true that I am near of kin, there is a kinsman redeemer near, and this is the fear, than I. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to redeem, good, let him redeem. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So Boaz is prepared to redeem, and he is willing to go through the all the the rules that need to go through, but he wants to make sure that it's done right. He can't be seen to be trying to bend God's rules to suit himself. So he's prepared to go to this other redeemer. And he's already told Ruth not to fear, that he will do it. And he now tells her just to lie here until morning. Content yourself. I've got it under control. I'll do everything that needs to be done. You have made your intentions clear and I accept that and I praise God for that. And now I will sort out the rest of this. Just lie here until morning. Now, I I don't know how much sleep was had by Ruth or Boaz at this stage. I'm sure that Ruth was... um, thinking through everything that happened, wondering who this other redeemer is and what whether he will act or not because her whole future is at stake here. And Boaz, perhaps, he didn't sleep much either because 
He is thinking about how he's going to uh, approach this other redeemer, what plan he's going to put in place to make sure uh, that, that it gets sorted. Ruth is probably also worried about getting away from the threshing floor uh, in the morning so that nobody uh, accuses her, so that she doesn't lose her noble character that she's built up with the local people. So there's so much going on here. But Boaz has it under control. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognised. And he said, don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, bring me the shawl you're wearing and hold it out. And when she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and put it on her. And then he went back to town. So we've got this whole process here of Boaz making sure that Ruth doesn't go back to Naomi empty. And that's what we were thinking about uh, on Sunday, about being full and about being empty. And indeed, we'll find out that the whole reason for him giving her this was the empty and full process. So when Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, how did it go, my daughter? So if Ruth and Boaz hadn't slept much during the night, I wonder about Naomi. Had Naomi slept much or had she been awake all night wondering what was going on, what was happening, not getting any word back um, until now? How did it go, my daughter? And then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Naomi, the one who had complained about being empty, was now being filled and Boaz was blessing her. God was blessing her through Boaz. And little did she know that it wasn't just this grain that was going to fill her, but it was going to be a child born, a grandson. And that would also bring her fullness as well. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest until the matter is settled. There's that word rest again. And I think that word bears a lot more attention in this story and maybe in the Bible as well. That we would find rest and shalom. The man had been at rest the night before. He had gone to lie down in the the threshing floor beside the pile of grain. The harvest was almost over. Everything was done. He was content. He had eaten and drunk. There was nothing on his mind, nothing to worry him. But now he's not at rest because he has to go and approach this other kinsman. He has the prospect of marrying Ruth and redeeming the land. But Naomi says he'll not rest until this is sorted out. He's going to sort it out and he's going to get it right. And Naomi has every confidence. Boaz has already reassured Ruth and said, do not be afraid. And Naomi has that same confidence today as well. So in the grey box on page 53 we read, As you face the broken realities of our world and your own life, how does it feel to know that Jesus looked at them and said, I will do it? How does that help you not to be afraid at the darkness and helplessness of our lives? Give thanks rejoicing in this willing Redeemer. So that's something that we've got to pray about today. And give thanks that in the midst of despair, there is hope in Jesus Christ. The song today is Maker Made a Child by Emu Music. And this song is all about Jesus being born in Bethlehem, about the Maker, God Almighty, making a child and sending him to this earth. But it also points to what we're reading about in Ruth and about Obed being born to Ruth and to Boaz. And then it also points on a third level to Jesus coming back again. The child that was born here is returning. He's coming back and bringing hope for us all. So let's give thanks for that and let's realise that God takes away our fear today. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, you have told us, do not be afraid. And today we trust in you and we find the hope in Bethlehem in Jesus Christ. And we thank you that you have taken away our fear and that today we can trust in you alone. Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus to this world. And we, find, we pray, Lord, that we would find the hope that comes from him alone. And we pray that we would find it day by day 
as we walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen.